So the person who became the Buddha was a royal prince who lived two and a half thousand years ago. And after some spiritual experimentation between extreme asceticism and meditation, he found a middle way. And from that middle way, he sat underneath the Bodhi tree in Bogai in northern India and achieved enlightenment. And so then he gets the title Buddha. Sanskrit means awakened one. And what he awakened from was ignorance about how things exist and how he exists in relation to the world. So that was the creation of Buddha and Buddhism as we know it now. Buddhism then spread to China and Japan, places like Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, into the Himalayas like Bhutan and Tibet, Mongolia, those regions. There are different Buddhist traditions in Leeds. Tibetan Buddhism is just one. There is the Japanese Zen tradition. We also have a version of Western Buddhism called Sri Ratna, which they kind of draw from many different traditions. Then there's also the Thai traditions. There's the more person-focused tradition, which is the Forest Sangha. And then there's a, a royal kind of tradition, which is the Wat Buddharam. Welcome to Wat Buddharam Leeds, the Thai community in Leeds. The Thai temple here been open three years. In this year, we got the uh, seven uh, monks stay in the temple, uh, help the Buddhist people or the Western people come to practice meditation in the, this temple. I have been working here in Wat Ramli as a Buddhist missionary monk. Today, we see a lot of people come together to join the big ceremony to listen uh, the sermon about Prabhupada or the last life of the Buddha. It's about their giving, it's about forgiveness, and that's the reason why we Thai people are generous, because we cultivate this value from this sermon. And in the afternoon, you would see that a lot of people come to join the floating flower lanterns because they would like to pay respect to the Buddha by the candle and flower. It's about how to let it go. When you suffer, like you put it in, in the floating flower lanterns and let it go. And another thing, it's about how to cultivate gratitude for water. <laughs> In the ceremony, you can see various kinds of offering. First, you saw the lay people offer food, water, and even money for monks because they know that monks have to live their life depending on lay people's support. And then they help each other to improve their quality of life. I came to Leeds specifically to study, find out more about these amazing teachers, these monks and nuns that follow a very calm and peaceful path towards happiness. And that led me onto the path then of trying to do more for others. What I've learned from the teachings is that it's always possible to be kind and gentle, considerate, have awareness of others and their feelings. Coming here and just having the peace and quiet, I find it very healing for me personally. It's very difficult to explain to somebody the energy and the feelings you get, and then you can just take it all into consideration and then tailor it and take what you need from Buddhism, really. For me, you know, seeing all the different Buddhist traditions in these is quite inspiring because, you know, even the Buddha taught different things you know, to different people depending on what they needed. So to have all these different aspects, you know, that the Buddha taught is really inspiring. Well, the process is, is kind of like firstly identifying, you know, what it is that makes us suffer. You know, the very fact that we have this propensity to kind of get attached to things and craving. The main cause is the, uh, you know, the internal projections and the suffering that we create on that basis. The real Buddha's message was to try and eliminate some of these wrong views that we have. And once these views are removed, then, you know, 
the natural kind of compassion and wisdom in our own minds grows and grows so that then we can really help ourselves and others. But at least if we're not harming others, that's the main point, that's the real essence of Buddhism. <laughs>